Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high-grade version of c Classe's Schwalbe Custom from the Iron-Blooded Orphans app game Uruzu Hunt. So don't ask. I don't know why that's Uruzu, but I'm not gonna ask any questions. Anyway, as always, this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of these or for any of your Gunpla needs, link is down there in the description. So first off, talking a little bit about the build of this kit. Now this is a classic 2015 Iron-Blooded Orphans feeling build right here. This is, in essence, just a color swap of the Schwalbe Greys we would have seen before, but we do have a new runner in here, which is Runner F. This is all the new changes to the Schwalbe Greys on it, and besides that, it's just a bunch of different colors, but 100% a classic 2015 or 2016 feeling Iron-Blooded Orphans build right here, and I will mention, the Grays has always been a more solid build than the actual Gundam frames themselves, so I never feel the need to do any kind of modification during the build, so straight out of the box, this works pretty okay. So if you've built a Grays before, you know exactly what to expect here. So now jumping right on into the aesthetics, and there's the full 360 degrees of c Class A's Schwalbe Grays. Now, of course, the biggest difference compared to the Schwalbe we would have seen before in blue is the fact that this is in a kind of maroon ready color with brown and a very light brown inner frame. So the first complaint I would have about this kit is these colors really show up knobs. Unless you're super, 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 super careful and sand up absolutely everything, you will get nubbage all over the place. The knobs do feel classic, so they are all over the surface, so you will need to take a lot of extra care while building it. Also on top of that, this definitely does have the classic high-grade color separation, so that means that it is okay for the most part, but any small details are requiring stickers. So here is the sticker sheet. I did use the vast majority of them except for the ones up on the antenna because I don't particularly like stickers up on the head so much because they are very, very obvious. But the ones that do work quite well are these almost arrow or chevron kind of patterns up on the shoulder and on the shield in a light grey. Besides that, we do have some yellow ones in the chest, in around back in that classic kind of grey sort of way, and we do have some for in the face for the various sensors. Besides that though, the color separation is what you'd expect from a fairly dated feeling kit, but on the whole, it's still a nice grays. Another aspect that I'll have to mention with, I guess, Bandai completely pumping these out and out and out and out is the set of polycaps in here seems to be really degrading. The amount of flash on these is beyond what I've ever really seen from a Bandai kit. Bandai, you might want to stop uh, beating the dead horse. Move on. But yeah, as I've said multiple times, the Greys was a great kit when it came out and it still holds up quite well. The amount of detail on here looks great, especially around the torso, the kind of raised armor sections against the full inner frame does look pretty cool. It looks very mecha, it does look fairly low tech, and we do have some nice changes compared to the Greys we would have seen before, or should I say the Schwalbe Greys. The new additions are the shoulder up there on the right hand shoulder, that front segment, the pattern there with the arrows that is actually molded into the plastic underneath those stickers, the shield is brand new, the rear skirting armor is different, the thrusters around the back are new with a smaller looking set of thrusters which are quite unique and honestly look pretty cool. The upper legs have been changed so we no longer have those massive thrusters we would have seen in the blue kit way back when, we now have more recessed almost more technologically advanced looking thrusters. Now the big question when you get a kit that is based on an older kit that has a lot of changes involved, you might be wondering, well, do we get all the older parts? And the answer is for the most part, yes. So we do get the leg parts with the big thrusters and the large kind of binder armor. Those are included if you want to swap this kit around, retrofit it with some extra parts. We do have the older butt flap and we do have the full weapon we would have seen on the Schwalbe Graze's left arm in place of the shield. So all of this is included inside the box if you like stuff to mess around with, customize and play with. Which adds to the variable nature of this particular kit and that's always a massive plus. Let's check out the accessories. So now jumping into the accessories and here is Cyclase's Graze with absolutely everything that it comes with. And some of the things we've seen in here before and a couple of things are new. What we saw before is the classic Gray's rifle and axe combo, and on top of that then we've got this pair of handguns. There is no extras in here, no widespread open hands, no fists, no nothing like that, just the basics. Let's check them out. So the first piece of equipment has been attached to the Gray's the whole time, and that is the shield right here. Referred to in the instructions, this is a joint buckler. We've got two colors, that is the 
maroon up front around back then we do have that light brown and it's pretty cool that Bandai has actually allowed some of that light brown to move around to the front to look like a bunch of bolts or connection pieces that is pretty cool we also have two stickers on there as well that is not color separated attaching this is super simple what we have on the wrist is just a peg so that does mean when it is attached it can rotate slightly for some nice posing so the next weapon that we have in here is the classic Grey's Rifle, 100% the same as what we would have seen before, besides the color is now in that light brown plastic. Now this is a rifle I've always, always loved. The way it attaches is super cool. You just detach these three segments right here, slide it into the only hands we have included, which are these holding hands, and then you attach on the under segment like so, which mounts the actual rifle into the underside of the forearm, locking it in place kind of in a little bit of a Gundam 00 kind of way. Then you just pop on the outer segment like so, and that right there is what it looks like attached. Once again, a very, very nicely designed rifle that looks like it takes care of business. I'll also mention we do have a moving handle up front as well. Continuing on now with the second Zaku-derived weapon, and that is the axe. This is just a big old hunk of plastic, and while it's meant to be an axe, what else does it need to be? If I recall correctly, the bladed segments are meant to be in a slightly lighter color of plastic, but they're not in here, so you'll have to paint those, but otherwise, simple and effective. Again, popping it into the hand is super simple, it just slides on in just like so, simple as. Once again, it is a circular peg into a square hole, so it can end up rotating in the hand on you at times. Also, when it is not in use, we do have a hole on the side skirting armor that allows you to mount it on there for storage, just like so. So now moving on to the weapon that is unique to this kit, which is the pair of handguns. According to the instructions, these 130mm caliber short barrel handguns are firearms developed exclusively for the Schwalbe. These were taken from the Gallerhorn base where Cyclops Meyer took them from the Gallerhorn base when he stole the mobile suit and equipped them with the blades when he customized the Schwalbe. So yeah, just like the blurb mentions, these are a pair of handguns with a bit of a revolver style with some blades up front. When it comes to the color separation, it is two halves to the actual pistol itself. We've got the blade color separated out into the lighter gray, and we do have a section down bottom, just like we would have seen with the gray's rifle, which locks these into the forearms nice and tight. I really have to say I am quite impressed by the design of these, especially the one held in the left hand, because it does line up with the shield ever so perfectly, in a way that I actually really wish that this kit had a shield on the back of its right arm too, because it just looks so cool, they line up so nicely, it does have a bit of a G and sword kind of vibe, and these honestly, are pretty cool accessories. From what I can see here and in the instructions, it doesn't seem like there's any way to mount these when they are not in use, so it seems like the only place to put these is in the hands. So now jumping into the articulation and first off a little bit of a comment on the build. Now this without a single doubt is definitely classic iron-blooded orphans when it comes to the build. AKA when you move it around a lot, just posing and posing and posing, it will eventually just pop at a lot of the polycaps. It's, I'm not sure if it was just the design at the time or what, but the polycaps will pop quite often and it can kind of drop a pose while you're posing it. Once it's posed, it's not gonna drop it, but it's easy to knock different segments out of the pose. I guess it's just the kind of law the lever or something like that. It's an odd design, which I love the look of, but it can be a little bit awkward. Anyway, from the head down. So its head is your typical double polycap joint, but there isn't much of a giggity 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 goo because the bottom one is quite limited. There it is all the way down, there it is all the way up, side to side, and honestly for a grunt, it's not too bad. We have a simple joint right here in the torso which allows the arm to move back and forward ever so slightly. Very nice. The polycap inside of the shoulder there is a line to move up and down. The shoulder armor here is also separate to the arm. Well, it's attached on in here via a C-clip. can move up and down like this. And as for the movement of the arm, that can move all the way up as far as there, all the way down to here. And we've got that full 360 degree spin at the shoulder. We have the full 360 spin right here, a single point bend at the elbow, so just beyond 90 degrees. We've got rotation at the wrist armor, which allows you to move this shield. The shield can rotate on this axis, and we've got a standard ball joint wrist. In here, we have your typical iron-blooded orphans pivot back and forward, a little better than what we see in the Gundam frames. The side to side is mainly just the ball joint that came off earlier on. We've got some odd side skirtings here, which are mounted basically into the spine. So they have an interesting point of pivoting up and down inside of that. Besides that though, it is just up 
and down ever so slightly here. And we do have a rotation, which is a little hard to get at, but it can move back and forward at that point. These do heavily impact the full rotation at the waist, so you won't be getting too much. Around the back, these thrusters are attached via a ball joint, so they can swivel down and up just like so, and do the ball joint jazz and angling. The bottom one does not have a ball joint, so it can just pivot up and down like so. And all of these have this moving thruster in the end here, which can pivot pretty much the whole way around from up there, all the way around to down there. We've got a single point hip joint, so that can't move up or down. Next up there is the kick all the way up to the front, so that is incredibly limited by this non-moving front skirting armor and chonky front of leg. There it is out to the back, so that is a little bit on the miserable side right there. As for the splits, these can go most of the way out, get blocked by the side skirts, and we do have rotation right here at this point, which is kind of cool because it is on this barrel segment. Unique. There's the bend at the knee, so it's a double jointed bend, so that isn't so bad. Nice bend right there. There it is all the way back to where it was and popping off that leg. And now testing out the functional movement, there it is all the way to the front. We lost some armor, there it is out to the back, so not great. And there it is side to side, which is actually pretty damn good. The toe is classic high grade, so it doesn't move whatsoever. I'll also mention it because I had almost completely forgotten. I've got the butt flap back here blue tacked on because it just would not hold. So yeah, that wasn't holding on at all. So I had to use some blue tack. Otherwise, it just literally fell off without me doing anything. So almost forgot, but that butt is loose. So yeah, when it comes to the articulation on the Schwalbe Grace right here, the best word is probably pathetic or abysmal. That might be the best. Definitely worse than some of its parts, and blocked by a whole bunch of different bits and pieces here and there, and the stability is, well, not good. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I love the grazes. They're some of my favorite, if not my favorite, grunt kits when it comes to the Gundam universe. That doesn't save this kit right here from being bronze tier. This is not 2022 standards whatsoever. Compared to what we're seeing with the Kyokai Senki line, pumping out some ridiculously awesome grunts with great technology, this is just dated and miserable, honestly. Again, I absolutely adore the greys, but if we take a look at every aspect, aesthetically, it's quite good, but the colors chosen here do nub up quite a bit, and with the old Iron-Blooded Orphans tech, that does mean you're going to be cleaning up a lot of nubs, and still, it's a big-ish job. The amount of stickers in here is pretty poor too, some of them don't actually stick that well, and some go on really awkward points, like on the tips of the antennas. When it comes to the weapons and the accessories, these are very nice. We are lacking anything like a pre-posed hand or anything unique besides the regular block holding hands. The new weapons are a cool concept and executed relatively okay. And the old weapons, especially the rifle, is pretty cool. Finally then, when it comes to the articulation and the stability of the kit out of box, these are so subpar, it's ridiculous. Really not good at all. You'll get a couple of basic poses out of it, that is about it. But anything around the torso, the waist unit is pretty much paralyzed and everything gets in the way, kind of knocking each other about. Not great, bronze tier, and I don't say that that often, but unless you really need, need, need this kit, I would recommend passing. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members, including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunpla UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc., Lawrence Seahack, or G59061 and Van Fawn.